Hi, I'm Leah Wheatholter, CEO and founder of Workman Forensics in Tulsa, Oklahoma. In response to the COVID-19 outbreak, my team at Workman Forensics and I have created a worksheet to help small business owners navigate tracking the Paychecks Protection Program loan proceeds. And so I want to show you in this video how to first download our free worksheet, and I promise it's absolutely free. And then I want to also show you how this worksheet uh, was intended to be used and just to help you stay organized as you go throughout the next six to eight weeks using your funds so that you'll be prepared and just more organized whenever you go to the bank to apply for loan forgiveness. I know some of the forgiveness technicalities are still in the works, so we're not advising one way or the other on that, but this is just really a tool to help you get organized so when all of that is finalized, you'll know exactly how to walk in and present your information to the bank. So let's take a look. The Funds worksheet is available to download at our website. And whenever you get to this page, you're going to click add to cart. You're going to need to agree to our terms of use. This will allow you to enter your email. And then hit continue. You will need to enter your payment information. After filling out the information at the cart, you'll come to an order confirmation screen. And at this screen, this allows you to download the worksheet from here. If you forget, no problem, you'll also get an email with this digital download. You'll wanna save this in a place that you'll know where it's located. And then open it up. Now this worksheet has been designed so that certain cells are protected so that you only have to enter information in certain cells and the worksheet will help you do that. But in order to use this, you will need to click on this yellow bar up the top. You'll need to click enable editing. If you click and try to edit a cell that is not intended for you to input information, you will get a notice that the worksheet is protect, password protected. It's this way on purpose. So just make sure that you go and enter the information in the cells that are unlocked and it's just to help you be able to use this worksheet in a much better way. All right, so I have an example that I just created in Word of a potential payroll report. And a payroll report will typically list all of the employee information first. And then on the very last page, you'll have a section that lists all the totals. And so I've got some of those totals here, and then I'll show you how to translate that to your Triple P worksheet. First, you need to enter the date that you received your loan proceeds. Then it will automatically take you to the balance column, which is where you need to input the amount of loans you received. Just for fun, let's put $500,000. All right, then you're going to enter your next payroll. So my in my example, my next payroll is going to happen on the last day of the month. And let's say that the payroll provider debits my money a little earlier. So I'm going to actually use the date that the money is going to come out of my bank account. That's just how I prefer to do it. So let's say that it happened on the 27th. I'm gonna separate this out into different categories. So first, I'm going to separate it out by payroll. So payroll for 430. Then I'm gonna select a category. First, we're gonna address gross wages. Gross wages are going to be listed on your payroll report, and this is the total amount that you paid to employees before any of their taxes came out or anything like that, or any deductions. What is that total gross amount? And we're gonna enter that here. $50,000 is my example. I don't have any adjustments for this category based on the most recent guidance from the SBA. So there's nothing else to enter. We're gonna to go to the next line. On top of gross payroll, I as the employer have to pay employer taxes. So let's do that next. So I'm going to enter employee taxes for the payroll of the 30th. Then I'm gonna select the category employer taxes. And I'm gonna look at my payroll report and I'm going to see we're not gonna include anything of the employee portion. That is all included in the gross wages and it can be included and paid with the triple P loan funds. I'm gonna look at the employer portion of all of these different areas. So I'm gonna enter plus and I'm gonna add up social security, Medicare, federal unemployment and state unemployment. So plus 3,000, 725, plus 119, plus 2,500. That gives me my total 
amount of employer taxes. Then I'm going to do an adjustment on this. Anything that was paid to the federal government needs to be adjusted out based on this newest guidance. So that portion includes Social Security, Medicare, and federal unemployment. Now, that reduces the amount of what I can pay out of this triple P loan in the PPP loan amount column. And also it reduces my overall balance of the funds that I have received. Okay, the next category, I'm going to pay for employer contributions for retirement. And you can call this anything that you want. That feels for you. Then I'm gonna select employer retirement contributions. And then I'm going to input the amount of contributions for that pay period. All right, then we're gonna to go to the next line and we're going to enter, let's do employer um, paid health insurance premiums. And I'll select the category for employer paid health insurance premiums and we're gonna say that's $10,000 and there's no adjustment required. So just so you kind of know how this spreadsheet works, whatever category you've selected from our drop down menu, it will trigger the adjustments column. Then let's say there's some other type of contribution or benefit that you pay. So I'm just gonna call it other benefit. You can also select other benefit here. And then lastly, because we're at the end of the month, you might also need to pay rent. So let's go ahead and mine comes out on the first of every month. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna say rent for May. I like to date it, you don't have to. And then I'm gonna select the category rent. And then let's say that my rent is $5,000, oops, 5,000 a month. Now, what you'll notice is in the adjustments column, something pops up mortgage principal. This is only going to apply if you own your building, which I'll show you an example of in a minute. But if you rent or lease your office space, you can just ignore this adjustment, it's zero. All right, so let's say that you don't rent, but you own, and that your payment is due on the 15th of every month. So mortgage payment for your building. You're gonna go ahead and you're gonna select that last category again, rent, lease, mortgage payments. And let's say that your mortgage payment is $5,000. All right, the part that can be paid by the triple P loan proceeds according to the latest guidance is only the interest portion. So let's just say, in looking at your statement, let's say that $500 is interest and $4,500 is principal. You'll need to input the principal amount in the adjustment column so that it can adjust out that and so that you'll know the amount that you can pay using the triple P loan funds. Last category, let's say that on the 15th of the month, you need to pay for your internet. So you can also select in the drop down menu utilities. Let's say your internet's $500 a month. There's no adjustment and that amount comes across here. So the way I do this is especially for payroll, I have my triple P loan money in a separate bank account and then I work through the worksheet and then I look at, okay, how much of my payroll can I pay using the triple P loan funds? Then I add those up and you can simply do that by highlighting. So let's say that this was my payroll. I'm gonna highlight that and that tells me how much I can transfer from my triple P loan funds to my operating or payroll account so then I can pay payroll. So that's just one way that I do it and maybe that will help you out as well. And then of course, do the same for rent and utilities or your mortgage payment, uh, the interest portion of your mortgage payment. Now the last section is where we have recommended because we are forensic accountants and we do a lot of reviews for loans or really anything that requires where did money come from and where did it go, which applies in this situation. And so the documentation we would ask for if we were on the examiner examination end or the review end have been listed here for you. Now your bank might require more, it might require less, but these are the things that will help substantiate how you've used your loan funds. And for example, you're gonna want your payroll report in your payroll report for our example end of April pay period, it's going to be one report for all those different lines. And then also you'll want your bank statement to show 
where the payroll company or however you pay payroll, where it actually debited or reduced your bank account um, balance. Then for your rent payments, you're going to want to provide a lease or if you have a loan, show your loan payment documentation because they'll need to see how much was supposed to be the mortgage adjustment out and how much was appropriate for interest. And then for your utilities, just keep your invoices or your receipts from your utilities company for things like internet and phone, you know, uh, heat, air, whatever utilities you pay for your company. So I hope you find this helpful and that you're able to use this and navigate the next six to eight weeks and that you're very prepared for applying for your triple P loan forgiveness. Thanks so much.